The main event of Bellator 148 on January the 29th in Fresno, California is a welterweight matchup. And Paul Daly is now a guest on our show. He's going to take on Andy Yurick. Paul, appreciate the time. First off, how weird is it for you, the fact that you're headlining a card in Josh Koscheck's backyard? That's very weird. I'm like, hashtag, where is Josh Koscheck? What Was he nervous? Did he know that I was going to be the co-main event and outshine his boring wrestling blanket type performance? Is, is he trying to get some extra time in before we eventually meet? Is he afraid of losing? It's just a whole, it's a weird situation. You've got, you got to imagine me just a, a British guy, as I see myself, fairly simple, relaxed, laid-back guy coming from a little town. Oh, sorry, a little city, Nottingham, traveling all the way to California to headline a fight show when their their hometown boy is, is arguably one of the most recognizable faces and names in MMA. Why why am I traveling all the way over there to, you know, to headline a card in his hometown? It's just a real bizarre thing. But, you know, at least his fans will be entertained, like I say. And uh, I'll show them uh, how how things are supposed to be done. How long a flight is that for you? A long flight. It's maybe thirteen hours traveling in total. Yeah, it's a it's a real long way to go, but I'm happy to do it. I'm, I would like to apologize on behalf of Josh Koscheck and all his fans and hometown MMA supporters that he has let you down, and I will make the journey all the way from England to entertain you all. Of course, the, the opponent here, Andy Yurick, uh, I had a chance to talk to him, and he understands that he, he's a massive underdog in this fight. And, you know, his nickname is Stunner. He says, hey, I'm coming to stun the mixed martial arts world. Is what makes him the most dangerous is the fact that everyone expects him to lose? Is that the thing that you see is that's what makes him the most dangerous in this fight? Yeah, most definitely. The fact that everyone expects him to lose and the fact that he, he knows and sees this as such a massive opportunity but I never take any fight lightly because I, I say this, I say this again, every fighter that I fight is going to be the best version of themselves. They're going to pre- prepare extremely hard because I'm a dangerous opponent that knocks people out. I'm, I'm a big name in the sport of mixed martial arts. It's a big opportunity for people people that fight me. So every person that I fight prior to the fight, uh, unless it's, it's someone um, that, that's come from the same experience level as myself I'll say says that they're going to shock the world says that they're happy they're the underdog and says, says all this stuff which I've heard before and you know whether they say you know they're going to shock the world or whether they say you know, they're expected to lose or you know they're just going to try their best it doesn't matter they can try their best they can be their best they can truly believe they're going to shock the world but at the end of the day they will lose and it's going to be the same uh with Andy, he, he will lose, and I respect that he's going to prepare well, and I respect that he, he, uh, you know, he believes he's going to come and, and stun the world because I would expect nothing less as a fighter, and you know, I respect that. Is your belief in this fight that he's going to try to shoot on you from from the moment, and uh, you're you're just going to show him that look, you're not going to be able to take me down, and you're going to have to strike with me. It doesn't matter what he does, really. It doesn't matter what he does. Um, he will lose the fight. I've, I'm just a better fighter. Um, I've, I've got the world of belief. I've got the world of faith. I've fought much tougher competition. Uh, win, lose, or draw. I've been in there for a longer time against world-class op- opposition. Um, I've, I've had you know, every experience that you can have, good and bad. I'm prepared. I'm at a good point in my career, and there is just no way that this kid can beat me. You know, I, and like I say, I respect him, um, but he will lose. Uh, whether he chooses to shoot straight away, whether he chooses to engage me in a stand-up fight, whether he even takes me down, he will lose the fight eventually, and it will be by stoppage. So it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me what happens. And when people think about what what is going on with yourself and Bellator, a lot of people, you know, when they point to this card, they said, well, why are we just not doing Paul Daly, Josh Koscheck at this point? I mean, is it, do you feel like that at some point this fight's going to happen? You just don't know when it's going to happen? Yeah, most definitely. You know, the Koscheck fight will happen. Um, I've said it. It's, it's one of the biggest fights that 
Bellator can make, you know, um, with, so, as far as rivalry, as far as, uh, you know, your hardcore fans' awareness, your new fans' awareness, and, you know, even the, 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 the more, I say, mainstream fan, that they, they recognize the incident that happened between myself and Koscheck. He's a recognizable character throughout the sport of mixed martial arts. The incident is memorable for so, so all the, the publicity that, that it garnered after the fight. So it's definitely one of the biggest fights. And, the, you know, the guys at Spike TV and the guys at Bellator, they'll definitely put the fight together. Me personally, you know, Koscheck's on a big losing streak, even though it has been to the world's best and current champions. Um, but I feel he needs to win a fight. I feel he needs to, to, to win a fight. I'm, I'm undefeated at Bellator. I'm on a... God knows how many fight winning streak across MMA and kickboxing. Um, you know, he he needs to win a fight, in my opinion. What do you enjoy more, an MMA fight or a kickboxing fight? Uh, I enjoy being able to do both, and that's the good thing about Bellator. I know they will allow me to, to do both. It keeps things fresh for me, you know. It can get a bit stale preparing just for an MMA fight. Um and I'm, and I'm, most of these fights in MMA, I'm entering the fight as the, the favorite. And, you know, I could take that because, like I say, I'm fighting. I fight with the same mentality. I fight to win, and I have faith in my ability that I will win. But sometimes it is nice to be the underdog and, you know, do a little less of these interviews and have a little less uh, of, of uh, the attention or the expectations of, of how you will win or whatever. You know, a lot of these kickboxing fights, because of my my uh, my infamy in MMA and uh, my knockout ability, uh, I'm fighting the top kickboxing guys. You know, I don't go into these kickboxing fights fighting the bums. I'm fighting guys that are ranked in the top five in the world. So it's nice to have that underdog uh, feeling and, you know, prepare to, to, to do uh, what people don't expect you to do. Any uh, kickboxing fights on the horizon right now, or is right now all your concentrations on this fight and you'll worry about the future after this fight's over? Yeah, pretty much. You know, I'm just concentrating on this fight, but I, I know Bellator have said that they're going to now that Glory's left Spike TV. I think Scott said he wants to continue the Dynamite show, so Bellator just might do their own kickboxing thing, have their, their own kickboxing fights uh, thrown, thrown in there, and I'm happy to represent Bellator wherever it be, whether it be kickboxing for the actual Bellator MMA promotional or different promotions as King Mo did over at uh, the Rising Show in Japan and, and uh, Brendan Ward and AJ. Anyone who follows you on Facebook know you got your gym, Spirits Dojo is the name of your gym. A anybody we should uh, yeah. be keeping an eye out for that gym that, that's up and coming that uh, maybe they're not a name right now, but in the next year or so we're going to know who they are? I got a lot of guys, but all my guys are focusing on kickboxing right now. I do have guys that want to go to MMA, but you know, obviously, I want to. You know, Hoist Gracie has a gym; he's going to mold them into jiu-jitsu fighters. Matt Hughes has a gym; he's going to mold them into wrestlers. Uh, we, my fighters, will become MMA fighters not any time within the next 12 months. You know, I have a few very, very good kickboxers, um, three or four amateur kickboxing champions. And uh, that's what we're concentrating on. When, when they do release them into the MMA world, they will be knocking everybody out. But for now, they're, they're just building the, their name and their ability in the kickboxing world. Final thing, Paul, and I really do appreciate your time this week. Uh, next fight, you get the win here on, on January 29th. Are you fighting for the title or are you fighting Josh Koscheck? Who knows, man? <laughs> that's a good question. You should direct that order, Scott Coke and the guys, the guys at the top. To me, I would like to fight for the title. This win that I get when I beat Andy, um, will, I'll be five and zero with the promotion. You know, uh, I, I'm going to stop Andy, so that will be four stoppages uh, out of five, or four or three stoppages out of the five fights. Um, you know, I'm an entertaining guy. I can I can deal with the limelight. I can hold down a top spot position, and uh, I think I represent the, the company well as a champion. So I'm ready to take that opportunity and beat the Russian up. But I'm also prepared to uh, carry the, the, the promotion uh, 
and in the UK and fight Josh Koscheck if that's the fight that they want to put on over here. So I'm prepared, man. I'm just here to fight, get paid, and uh, continue my my, my uh, current form. Paul, really appreciate time. Good luck here on January 29th at Bellator 148. Nice one. Nice one. Thank you very much.